Welcome, y'all. Welcome to the Carving the Stone podcast. Um, if you're new to the business, to the media company, my name is Naisha Stone, and I'm the founder of Carving the Stone. We're your weekly source of positive news. Um, we've been around since 2017. We started with online positive news articles, then went to video interviews, radio, and now we're at the podcast, which you're listening to today. So um, Carving the Stone podcast is where our positive news articles um, come to life. So we're in the first few episodes of the podcast, and I'm really excited because we have someone from the UK um, <laughs> in the building, well, virtually. Um, so today we're going. Our guest is Jay Ann Lopez, and she is the founder of Black Girl Black Girl Gamers. And uh, we're going to talk about her making an impact in the gaming industry, but specifically heightening um, Black women and girls' voices in the gaming industry. So what's up, Jay Ann? How you doing? Oh, I'm good, man. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, thank you so much for for being on the show. Uh, you're the second you're the second guest. So I'm very excited. <laughs> it's great. Well done, you. It's great. I love it. Love it. So um, I just kind of want to start off like, how long have you been gaming? I'm pretty sure you've been like forever. Um, but what is it specifically when you were younger that interests you so much um, about gaming that's traveled into your adulthood? Yeah, um, I've been gaming since I was about six or seven years old. I can never remember what number it is, but it's one of the two. And like, my uncles got me my first console, but I was playing um games when my mom used to be a radio presenter. So she was a single mother. So when she used to go to the radio to record, I would have to find something to do. So they had Doom on the PCs in the radio um, studio. And so I'll be playing the game and keeping quiet whilst my mom was working. So gaming was a way to babysit, babysit me, but also just like a little escape. And I've always loved fantasy worlds and escapism into different worlds and fantasy stuff. So it's just grabbed me since then as it's never left I'm still the same as I am now as a grown woman as I was a child when it comes to games I love them truly like genuinely I love that so I grew up around my big brother who's five years older than me and he loves games but as you know the gaming world is surrounded by a whole bunch of men so anytime I did like a game I always feel like I got crushed or they didn't want to teach me how to play the game so um Let's get into like black girl gamers. Like, how are you using your platform to make sure other black women and girls feel welcome and feel like their voice is heard um, in the gaming industry? Yeah, it started out as a Facebook group just because I myself felt the same way. Like I felt ostracized, I felt invisible, um, I felt excluded. And so I wanted to create a group that reflected uh, the women who look like me, sound like me. And even if they don't, they're still women I can relate to because they're black women um for the most part um so like not everyone is looking skin focused skin folk but still like um I'm very much about empowering that sense of community and so I started that way um and I wanted to make black girl gamers a progressive space not just a safe one I didn't want us to just be like oh we're staying away from the racism and the sexism and you know that's enough no I wanted us to actually have change and it's something that I'm just I do regardless of whatever I do I'm always trying to change things so prior to having black girl gamers I'd, I have a platform on natural hair and black beauty empowering black women to embrace their hair and stuff and so that has always been me my mom raised me to be very vocal to be very black first um and yeah so with black girl gamers we've grown from just being a community to being a community powered business where we do a number of things such as creating our own content and putting black women from all over the world as, as the face of that, um, having our own events, um, brokering our members as talent for opportunities. So providing them with opportunities and money to go in their pocket, um, consulting on games as well. So consulting from different perspectives, it could be character representation. It could be recruitment to get more black people in the industry. It depends on whoever the client is and what they're asking for. Um, but it can also be on mentorship programs and workshops within the community just to give people a taste of different fields in the industry and then they can go and pursue if they want um, following that. But it's kind of giving them that first step of confidence. So we have like a series of workshops called Shoot Your Shot just to show that taste this little bit of voice acting, taste this little bit of art, taste this little bit of being a coder and see if that's what you like. And if it's something that's taking your interest, go shoot your shot. Take take this in information that we've given you, 
take the connection from the mentor that's talking in the in the workshop and just go for it so we try to like touch on different fields because I think a lot of people think you can only be a coder or a programmer or a like in that way and there's so many different areas in gaming you can work in so that's how we're doing it um at the moment slowly but surely I love that because when I do think of gaming um I do think of like you actually create a game, but there are a billion different things yep. um, that you can do. And like I said it before, we, you know, just record that um, for our scholarship, we, uh, one of our winners, um, she, she's a gamer. And so she, she did in her, um, in her, she submitted a video where she talked about the different roles in gaming and, and she's doing, she's trying to do exactly what you're doing. So I thought that was really cool that I need for me as a black woman and I look at games, I'm like, well, all you do is got to create the game, but it's like, it's the character development, it's the voices, it's the marketing, it's all of that stuff. So I think right. that's amazing that you're providing um the opportunity, but when it comes to the opportunity, you've been around since 2015, correct? Yep. So how are you able to successfully build your brand to, to a point where they can't ignore you? And now that you're partnering with Facebook, you're partnering with PlayStation 4, EA, like how did you go from we're at a Facebook group to now like I'm in a room and y'all going to listen and this is how we can help and this is how y'all can help us. Right. So the Facebook group was created simultaneously with like our social media. And the one thing about me is I've got a big mouth. Um, I'm not going to like shy away from things if I think like it, you're taking me for an idiot or you're, you know, it's blatant racism. And I think at the time, a lot of platforms and creators and streamers, they were just assimilating to the the the, the mass culture, which was white, toxic, male. And so we wanted to, I wanted to, because it wasn't really a, that much of a big team. We had about four community, three four community managers, including myself. Um, and we were all volunteering our time. So uh, at the time, I just wanted to be vocal. So I started using the Twitter to just call out industry companies for stuff, uh, lack of black female representation, um, problematic representation, lack of diversity within their workforce, problematic marketing, like anything that I found like I had the issue, I'm gonna call it out. And I still do. We still check the diversity reports every year to make sure that people are doing what they say they do. So I think over time, um, the profile grew, the, the, the social media grew because more black women realized that there was a platform for them and they didn't have to take on all the racism that came with making these points. So it became like a kind of bastion of support that so they would join i'd be vocal via the social media and they will get their point across without actually having to be vocal and they'll get their feelings across to the industry without having to be at the forefront taking all of that on their mental health essentially so that happened and then um for a while i didn't want to show my face <laughs> because i was very aware of how colorism and uh just privilege works in in industries and i didn't want to just be a face a mouthpiece I wanted to like build and have the work some of the work done so for a while I didn't show my face and then there was a time where I started to get in paid to speak about diversity black girl gamers how I built it um so I've done a number of speaking engagements at like Microsoft Unilever Twitter etc and that those first kind of paychecks were what went into the business so I didn't I still don't take money from the business I still work um, so that I can pay people to do what they want to do for black girl gamers. Um, and so when that time comes for me to switch, great. But for now, I'm I'm good handling that juggling so that I can put whatever comes from the business back into the business to, to grow it even more. And so from the talks that I did, the money went in and then we started getting noticed by brands and wherever there was a demand, we created an offering. So do you have any creators? Let's create our talent agency. Mm -hmm. Do you do sponsor streams? We already had a platform. So yes, of course. Um, do you do mentorship programs? Yeah, sure. Why not? Create the first one. Um, do you consult? Yeah, sure. Why not? We have people within the community that have knowledge in this area. I have knowledge in this area. We can combine all of that and, and consult for you. So yeah, it's about kind of being strategic in the first act of creating a visibility and a visible platform and a credible platform. I think the, the thing about BGG is that we don't just talk for the sake of talking. We're reading up on the industry. We know what's going on. 
Whereas a lot of people, when they talk about diversity, they're just saying diversity 101 stuff that you should know from five years back. So we're credible with the stuff that we, that we do. And so that's how we, that's how the, it's turned into a community powered business as opposed to just a community Facebook group. I love it. Um, you just, it's just cool just to hear other black women's stories, especially when it comes to building a powerhouse um, business. Because we started off positive news and we really didn't have any guidance with that. People like, what the hell is positive news? <laughs> and so well, thank God we need something like that, man. It's good. <laughs> and uh, then so you're you're able to literally, like you said, people like, well, do you offer this? And it's like, okay, what do we already know and what can we offer the community to begin to make money? Cause we weren't making money at first. I was just was just doing positive articles, like because that's what I was passionate about. I hated what they were covering. And so like, you start with a passion. And so well, I guess my question is, um, what advice would you give to other Black women when it comes to uh, building a sustainable business that's mm -hmm. diverse? And what I mean by diverse is that you literally are doing events, but you're also a gaming uh, company, but then you're also a consulting company. So how do you begin to make sure that you start off with a platform that's solid, but that can grow into anything that you can imagine? I think it's knowing your why. That's the key thing. Like you, you knew your why, your passion about positive news. That's something that the world needs because we're always seeing a lot of negativity. So like you, you know your why and that will help you go beyond the nine to five hours that you would allocate to a job. That will help you go beyond the box that a job will put on your mind. You will think outside the box because you want this to work. So when you have a good why, that helps you be creative. And I think being creative is really, really important. And then paying attention to what the market needs, paying attention to consumers, paying attention to what existing businesses are doing, maybe finding a niche. Um, and if it's not finding a niche, how do you do something better and more efficient than the competition? Um, and so I think it's just about, like I didn't have a business plan when I first started BGG. So I'm not gonna sit there and say, you need to have your business plan and stuff cool, that's something you need to have along the way. I still don't have a proper one. Like I've got a smidgen of one that I'm working on still now that we're moving into seed founding around stuff like that. But like when I first started, it wasn't about the business. It was about the why and what the impact was and what I needed and what I needed for myself. I was lonely. I needed black women to talk about games with because my experiences were terrible. Um, when you have that why, that that becomes your fuel. And so that will help you think outside the box, which is imperative when you're starting something specifically as a black woman, because they're going to be a lot of doors that they're just not going to open for you just because they're not even considering you um, until you start making a loud noise and then some everyone starts kissing your feet. So, yeah. I like you said kissing your feet and not the other one, but... Uh... <laughs> I, had to, I, had to, I had to check myself for a minute. Yeah, kissing your feet. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, what do you want people to know? At, and it's from a black woman. What do you want people to know about black women? I feel like there are so many stereotypes, so many negative things, so much just BS that gets associated with us. But from just like a gamer perspective, from your life perspective, like anybody listen to this. And I mean, as open as you want to be, as closed as you want to be, what do you want people to know about what it is to be a black woman or just black women, period? There's power in our vulnerability um very much I think that's for black women to listen to as well there's power in our vulnerability um we don't we are powerful beings we are strong but that's not all we are and that's not something that we have to be all the time so knowing when to build a tribe that you can rely on is really important um and for outsiders looking in on black women just don't take us for an idiot because we're probably way more intelligent than you anyway. Just to being like honest, I feel, I always say this and it kind of gets me a little bit of flack, but black, the more marginalized you are, the more intelligence you have because you have to navigate the world and uh, navigating systems that were not made for you. So black people have an instinct about racism and the people who enforce it. People who are from the LGBTQIA uh, community have an instinct about people who are not who are straight people because we enforce negative systems on them, they have to navigate. So they have an instinct that is an, a level of intelligence that we'll never ever be able to, to navigate. And so black women specifically, especially if they are um, from the LGBTQ, they have an extra lens. So like we are super intelligent beyond 
um, like degrees and stuff, those that we do have those, we are super intelligent, intuitive, intuitive. So when people try and take us for an idiot, it doesn't really work. And I think I wish that people would stop trying to do that to black women, because there's so many of us that if you try to build with us, the world would be such, such a better, bigger place, really and truly. So yeah, just stop trying to take us for a fool because we're really smart and very smart. Yes, J. Ann Lopez, if y'all not yeah. listening, uh, Black Girl Gamers, and this is the Carbon Stone Podcast. Um, I wanted to get into the kind of like the technical side of like just getting into the gaming industry. So can you talk about like how it's evolving? Because uh, you know, like, you know, we got the PlayStations, but now we're going into VR, uh, the metaverse. So how are you and you preparing yourself or how is the business Um right working or you know in that field when it comes to taking the evolution of gaming i'm learning um i'm learning more about web3 i'm learning more about the metaverse with that said a lot of web3 and the metaverse and concepts they come from gaming the metaverse originated as a more of a gaming concept and it exists already for some games like i'm sure you heard about fortnite and the travis scott like um performance and concert like there are already iterations of the metaverse existing we just don't call it that um I'm a little hesitant because I don't think I think they're also trying to shoe in shoehorn an error in um with hype but not really looking at the implications of that so like I, I'm very much a gamer but I'm also about balance so in real life balance and digital balance, you can do both. I think it's really important. And I think with the metaverse, there's no need for it to be an overarching thing that everyone needs to be at, be able to access through a headset. I think that's a bit, um, that's not democratization in that way. It's not decentralization. Um, I think, and that's like what, what the, that's what blockchain is supposed to be about, decentralization. So I'm interested in in watching how that intersects with gaming because gamers do not like over monetization of things. And if you start introducing mm -hmm. crypto as the sole way of playing for things, a lot of people are going to be ostracized and vocal about it because that's one thing gamers are as vocal, regardless if they're right or wrong, they're going to shout about it. So yeah, I'm just learning about things. I'm also like passionate about how the metaverse is interacting with fashion, which I think will be more positive for underrepresented, underdiscovered and independent designers because I love fashion as well. So that might be a positive, but with gaming, it's interesting because some of these concepts already exist. So for instance, some games already have their own type of currency that you have to buy to use in the game. Why would you then add another currency on top of that for then like another step of access for the consumer? It makes no sense. So I think they need to think about it a bit more carefully when it comes to gaming and how gamers will react to to the the web three and gaming and games in general. You brought up like having balance between like the digital world and like real life. And that was something like I, I always want to try VR, but I've been so scared because I'm like, once I put this on, like who knows like how I'm gonna feel about this. But like that's that's just been a concern I've had just overall when it comes to like the increase with tech. Like, yeah, we need tech and there's different things to take it's not just you know a laptop or whatever but that's been something I've been very curious about it's just like are we going to go into that world where people only want to be in a digital world now and they no longer like want to be in life and so that's always something I've like had in the back of my mind like what I doubt it I think people are overstating the fact that that's gonna like that's gonna happen I read an article on Forbes recently and it was like the younger generation will be more will be probably just as excited as did for digital Air Jordans as they will for in real life Air Jordans. I said, who? That's <laughs> not true. That's such a lie. Of course, when those real shoes on their real feet have real holes in them, they're going to wish they had some real Air Jordans, not just digital ones. And I'm the same. Like, I'll buy digital stuff in game, but I'm not as excited. I'm not overly excited about it in comparison to if I had the real item in real life. And so I think, and we've seen this with games like Sims, with people creating designer stuff for <laughs> their Sims and stuff. Like it happens, it's cool, but to build a whole consumer behavior around it and think it's going to challenge in real life behavior, I'm not so sure about that at all. Um, because I, you know, we have there's all kind of different humans, humans who are outdoorsy, who don't really don't want to touch tech. What about them? You know, there's loads of people who love to hike. I'm in California, remember they love to hike. 
what's that got to do with the metaverse nothing you're not going to go on a digital hike you need to you need to be out in nature so I think yeah we have to make sure there is a balance between the two and I don't think you're going to get addicted if you try VR trust me it's not even there yet trust when you when you when it becomes better maybe but it's okay <laughs> at the moment I, I trust you are you're more knowledgeable um than I <laughs> than I am when it comes to gaming um honestly I just have a few more questions um one being, how do you, how do you go about mentorship? Um, when mm. it comes to uh, whether it's older black women, people your age, or even younger younger black girls, but how do you go about mentorship? Because I know it's not just about gaming. It has, I know it's like kind of like a full full thing. So can you, can you speak on that? So it's different ways. Um, I used to do these live streams on my Twitch channel. I don't stream anymore. I haven't got time. Um, but it was like. I would be I'll be working on black girl gamers or doing some stuff having some music in the background and people would just come and ask me questions from the community and I'm like this is your time come and ask me a question if that's what you need I don't take on mentees because I don't have the time I'm juggling a job I'm juggling a full-time job I have employees like it's a lot so what I will do is allocate time out of the out of the week and um allow people to come and ask questions and that's just me being an open resource for someone for myself there are a number of black women from the UK who we kind of quote unquote grew up together not from a young age but from where I started um I started um the natural hair platform with my best friend this is when Instagram and like the natural hair community was all popping off in the UK there were a lot of black women around working on different things. So some were hair influencers like me. Um, some were creating their own agencies and stuff. And so through that, off from 2014 to now, we've all got our own businesses. So two, three of them have talent agencies. One, uh, my best friend has her own uh, dance class for curvy women. I have black girl gamers. Um there's others in like tech and stuff. So we kind of grew up together since 2014. And we, I will say to the girls, yo, I need to ask you some questions about this. Can I put half an hour in your diary? And that's how it works because they're at a similar stage at, as me. So they understand the most. They are a small business hiring in their own way. So I literally did that the other day about hiring full-time in the UK and how that works because a lot of the people who work for us are for con contractors or freelancers at the moment. So that's how I go about mentorship. There's a there's a tribe I have, and I I like networking. I think networking is so important digitally and in person. So sometimes you get mentorship just in a quick introduction conversation, and you don't even know it. I don't have a permanent mentor yet. I would look for one hundred percent, but I don't know. I just I need to do it. I'm tapping my hand. I need to do it. Anybody listening, she need a mentor and somebody's gonna come to you. Is it is gonna come to you? Um, I haven't found a mentor in media yet. Like I've had a mentor in real estate, and I'm not even in real estate, but eventually I want to develop me. So he nice. actually taught me business stuff. So like I said, I went, I was a journalist, and that's what I but now I consider myself a businesswoman. But I'm like, I'm doing articles. What do you mean? He like, but how yeah. are you making money? I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, like and so you know having a business model and just having a mentor to just help shape your visions and your ideas is definitely going to help so as you're waiting it's, it's amazing to know that you're providing that um for other people so mm -hmm. the last question I have for you is when people watched it not even watch this when they listen um to this interview what do you want them to get from this I want them to get that what it's so cliche but one person literally can start a tidal wave of change um it just takes you need to find your well and what your well is filled filled with your why and that is like a replenishing well once you've found your why and you're passionate about it you're not just going from ego or competition you're going from your you're passionate about this you really want to do that will never that will never cease that will hardly ever cease. And if it does cease, it's just because it's going into a different direction. So you then find a new why. Do you see what I mean? But your why is always there. My why is always community and black people. That's my why. It could be gaming, it could be beauty. That's my why. So it changed from gaming, from beauty to gaming. And now it's going back into beauty again. So it's like that never changes. So just find that well and work from your well and things will work out well. <laughs> That's it.
<laughs> that's beautiful she do you be doing poetry because that was that was i like that and i was oh, i did yo i do i do write poetry well. uh, ha, 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 ha. yes <laughs> i love it um well thank you so much jayanne um mm-hmm. this is the carbon stone podcast today's guest was jayanne lopez with black girl gamers and make sure to come back every single tuesday while while i interview different people um around the world um and talking to them about positive things in life so thank you so much and it's the carbon stone podcast